on to have a little man hug or anything when you I don't even know who you're talking about. I know they've got a center over there that's pretty good, but no, I don't, I don't know who you're talking about. I mean, look, the Clippers are the Clippers. You can change the players, you can change the owners, but the Clippers are just who they've been for the last 30 years. You know, I just don't give a about the Clippers. Maybe that explains it. <laughs> That's so hurtful. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, we are the Clippers. That's my answer. Talks the best. Mark Cuban not making any friends with the Clippers. Stephen A., were his comments in or out of bounds? They were totally in bounds, number one, because after the way uh, DeAndre Jordan snubbed them and didn't have, didn't have the courtesy, and that's the only problem I have with DeAndre Jordan, just pick up the phone and call him. Uh, that's the only thing he needs to be knocked for, for changing his mind. But outside of that, let's not act like his statements doesn't have any validity. Dallas is Dallas. They're a team that's won, uh, you know, been in the playoffs every year this millennial with the exception of one 41 and 41 season where injuries decimated them. Them. They've been to two NBA finals and they have an NBA championship on their resume. Meanwhile, the, the, the Clippers haven't been to a conference finals and on top of it all, they just came off of losing the way that they did in the semis after having a 19-point lead in that closeout game six before being outscored 49-9. to Not to mention the fact that Doc Rivers, who I love dearly and I, and, I, and I love him as a coach and as a person and as a motivator, the bottom line is they've won 57 and 56 games respectively in his first two years in Los Angeles but they still haven't been to the conference finals. They've got the personnel to get beyond that. And on top of it all, they're still not anywhere near as popular as the Los Angeles Lakers. So Mark Cuban is actually right for the time being. Well, but Stephen A., he, he's not right. They're not the same old Clippers because DeAndre Jordan would have, wouldn't have reneged on his deal in Dallas to go back to the old Clippers. They, they have made the playoffs the last four years. They do have Chris Paul and Doc Rivers. So to me, this just comes off as sort of petty spite on Mark's part. And I get that he has an ax to grind and, and he should have ill will toward that franchise. But when you step back, even Dirk said after the game, it's not really a rivalry because right now we can't hold up our end of that bargain. So I thought they were out of bounds, if not sort of just off point, off center. Well well, the Mark Cuban that I know, I interpreted it, Skip, as him saying that at the end of the day, we're still not going to be talking about them as champions. That's what I interpreted it to oh, mean. Okay. Clearly, certain things are different because you got CP3 and Doc Rivers there. There's no question. And Blake Griffin. These individuals are all box office. The flip side to it is that they usually they always end up on the outside looking in at somebody else celebrating a championship or at least a conference crown. Mark Cuban has two conference crowns, and he has an NBA crown on his resume. The Clippers can't say anything of the sort, and they've been around considerably longer than Mark Cuban. So Mark Cuban has a right to say what he said, and he has a right to feel sour about how things happen because DeAndre Jordan's reneging on the decision put him in a position to, you know, they had to go out and scurry to find something because he impeded their abilities in free agency. He has a right to say what he had to say, and Doc Rivers knows that. They just need to win in Los Angeles. The Clippers need to step up and get it done. A little salty. I like the war word. CP3's response, I didn't hear him say it, but he has my number. He can text it to me. Staying in the NBA, LeBron faces his former team, Heat, Cavs, and Cleveland. Who walks away with the win? We'll tell you that next. If the Los Angeles Dodgers don't hire an African-American for the only managerial opening remaining, this will be the first time since 1987 that baseball will open the season without a black manager. And in a game where some 40% of the players are foreign-born or minorities born in the USA, just one of the 30 dugout bosses, Atlanta Braves manager Freddie Gonzalez, is a minority. Stephen A., what do you make of this? Well, I think Major League Baseball has a problem. And I don't and I want to make sure that I absolve the commissioner's office from anything that I'm about to say, because I think that baseball through its RBI program, reviving baseball in the inner city, along with some of the contributions on the part of players, I definitely think from that kind of mindset, they should be applauded for the effort that they try to put forth. And I don't think anybody can ignore uh, the effort that Major League Baseball as an institution has tried 
to make in terms of that. But the numbers are clearly alarming because we're not just talking about African Americans here. We're talking about minorities. We're talking about approximately 40% of Major League Baseball being made up from individuals from different ethnic backgrounds. But the people in positions of authority, the decision makers, the decision influencers, those individuals are caught up in sabermetrics and analytics, not just in the sport of basketball like people have been lamenting in the past, but clearly also in the sport of baseball. And that doesn't, that doesn't appear to involve African Americans or people from minority backgrounds. And that's a problem. And it needs to be addressed. Because the fact of the matter is, when you don't have a... When Dusty Baker isn't called for an interview for this Los Angeles Dodgers job. That's just egregious. When we're talking about Bud Black or somebody else getting a Washington Nationals job, when Don Mattingly shows an inability to handle his pitching staff or personalities in today's game, but he agrees and reaches a mutual agreement to walk away from the Los Angeles Dodgers, and before he has an opportunity to pass gas, this dude is about to become the manager for the uh, Miami Marlins, but you have Willie Randolph who took the Mets within a game of the World Series. He can't get a look. Dusty Baker, he can't get a look. You're talking about Lopez, who's been a coach on the Dodgers staff for ages. He doesn't get consideration. It really is a problem. And Skip, I'm going to go back, not to, not to knock him in any way, because I heard where Bud Norris was coming from weeks ago in that article in USA Today about the brawls, and I respect his position in what he's saying. But as it pertains to this particular subject, Skip, please allow me to read this quote again. Quote, it's a culture shock. This is America's game because he's speaking about the 67 brawls that took place in the last couple of years and how 80, 87 percent was deemed as the main antagonist were guys from minority uh, 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 ethnic backgrounds. He says, this is a culture shock. This is America's game. This is America's pastime. Over the last 10 to 15 years, we've seen a very big world influence in this game. We, we're opening this game to everyone that can play. However, if you're going to come into our country and make our American dollars, you need to respect the game that has been here for over 100 years, and I think sometimes that can be misconstrued. He was talking about the players. I'm taking it a step further and talking about the decision makers. It is America's game. You've got guys from Dartmouth and Stanford and Harvard and all of these guys who never played the game, who've never been in a dugout, making decisions not just about who's on a roster, but who's managing that roster. And it doesn't appear to include anybody who isn't white. And that's a problem. And it needs to be brought up. I'm so with you on this one. This is such a bad look for a sport that has already lost so much of its African-American fan base. I've told you many times, back in my childhood days through the 60s, there were so many great black baseball players. And, and I think it brought in a, a larger portion, obviously, of the African-American community. And I'm, as we speak, I'm reading a, a new book from Bob Gibson, who was my favorite childhood player, uh, St. Louis Cardinals pitcher, for those who don't remember, dominated in the World Series. And yet we've lost so much of that, and now we've lost them also in the dugout. And I also want to reiterate the point that Molly made, that now that this game has around 30% Latin players, we have only one Latino manager, Freddie Gonzalez, with the Braves. That, that's, that's inexcusable, which brings me to my point, Stephen A. Why does the NFL have, have some, if not a lot, of success in this area? You know the Rooney, Rooney Rule? rule. Yep. We talk about it a lot, the Rooney Rule. My friend John Wooten runs the Fritz Pollard Alliance, which oversees the Rooney Rule. It is working. Thank you, John Wooten. It is working because all it forces an owner to do is to interview black candidates and once they get interviewed three or four times and get their names out there it helps put them on the job map and it opens eyes of other owners and other GMs to say well, wait a second maybe we should consider so-and-so who just happens to be black and then so-and-so has success as a black football coach and it leads to more success there to, to my knowledge there's no Rooney rule kind of system operating in MLB no nope. and they are paying a price for it again only 8% of the players are African-American, but 
But again, I'm a Dusty Baker fan. I, I like him personally, and I, I'm astounded he doesn't have another job because he's earned a job with the jobs that he did, obviously, in San Francisco and with the Cubs. So he played for the Dodgers, and you don't even interview him, and now all the, the reports are that Gabe Kapler will probably get that job. It's just inexcusable. Well, I'm with I, you, Stephen I, I, I will tell you, Skip Bayless, before we get on out of here, I will tell you this. You know what's even more alarming than the numbers, the 8% African-American, the 30-plus percent of Latino players? You know what's even more alarming about the fact that there are no minority managers to speak of other than Freddy Gonzalez? What makes it even more alarming is that that appears to be exactly what these teams want. In other words, it's one thing to sit up there and to say it's a problem. It's another thing entirely when you have a league, not the commissioner's office, but when you have a league, by and large, collectively, that appears to have the, 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 the thought process that says, we have no problem with the way that it is. It's our game. We want to make sure it stays our game. And this is a way to facilitate that it stays our game our game because as long as we're in control and we're the ones making the decision it don't matter what you do as a player because we can always get rid of you but we're going to make sure that we're the ones controlling the strings and making all the decisions that's the real problem here major league baseball unlike any other sport appears to be literally in terms of decision makers literally towards like they got the mentality we, this is how we'd like it to be. We want to protect, we want to protect America's national pastime. If we don't have an African-American audience, so what? If we don't have but so much of a Latino audience, so what? And by the way, the Latino audience ain't going anywhere because they love to play baseball because considering the, the nations they come from and how impoverished it may be, they're always going to be interested in the sport because it's a moneymaker for them. So we ain't worried about them. We don't care about them African-American audience. And as a result, coming from Dartmouth and Stanford and Harvard and all of these other places, what I Saber metrics, our analytics, we can continue to ensure that the imagery of this sport appears to be exactly what we want it to be. That's what seems to be going on here. It seems to be going on. Baseball does have the Selig rule, which requires them to consider minority candidates. And obviously, as the guys mentioned, the Rooney rule requires them to interview. So what? clearly, it is, it's not enough. And uh, What does that mean? I mean, what do they mean? You have to. How do we know they're considering it? <laughs> that's exactly. That's what the issue is, and that's why yeah. MLB continues to lag behind joke. the NFL and NBA in more ways than one. After what Mark Cuban said about the Clippers last night, Steve Ballmer and Cuban won't be kissing up and making up anytime soon.